Hello, hello guys. Welcome back to Quantum Mechanics. In this video, I'm um, just going to give a brief, you know, review in the subject of a particle in a box. You know what I'm saying? As if already went, you know, in depth in these cases, you know, in the previous videos, you can just go there to just refresh your memory. But I'm just going to give a brief, you know, um, you know, um, overview, right? In one dimension, we're able to find that, um, you know, the wave function of a one dimensional particle in a box model equal to a sine of n pi x divided by a where a um was the length right so you recall that our box was from zero to a and a was the length and then we normalized this wave function and found the normalization constant of a which was 2 divided by a sine multiplied by n by x divided by a. You know what I'm saying? All right. We normalize this wave function. If you are unfamiliar with how to normalize a, you know, a function, you know, you can just go to the previous video. You'll be able to, to see, you know, a step-by-step -step process of how to do that. And then we also determined the corresponding energy, you know, of a particle in a one-dimensional box which was n squared multiplied by h squared a m a squared and then h is Planck's constant this is the mass and then this is the length and then n was the quantum number you know um right okay and the manner in which this energy was determined it was through the process of operators where where an operator was acting on a wave function which gave n eigenvalue and the same wave function, right? And this eigenvalue, this eigenvalue was the energy, this energy, right? And then this was the eigenfunction. There is our eigenfunction. Sine of n pi x divided by a. All right. Um, so this this is how we, 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 we got the energy. And also one of the important things to note is that this energy can only have discrete values, right? It is quantized, you know. Um, and the lowest possible energy of this particle can never be zero. You know what I'm saying? You know, so now uh, we'll be talking about, you know, the zero point energy, you know, and everything, right? All right. So this is how we determined this energy, like, you know, the steps and mathematically and everything, you know. And then we go to 2D. In two dimensions, um, the wave function in terms of, x and y, right? Um, here, we had x in here, and then y is in here, right? In terms of n, x, n, y equals to. So it was more or less the same intuition. We just put an n there. Um, so this wave function is the product of... Um, the different contributions, um, it's going to be nx pi x divided by a multiplied by sine n y pi y divided by b. And as you would recall that a is the length and b is also the length. And there are cases where... There are cases where um, A can equal to B. You know what I'm saying? All right. Also for a two-dimensional model, right, the corresponding energies, right, um, just H squared divided by 8M into, so we've got N squared in terms of X, Divide by a squared plus n squared in terms of y divided by 
p squared right so this was the corresponding energy you know in two dimensions i never actually you know tackled it as to step by step i only did the 1d and the 3d do you know what i'm saying so 3d we actually tackled um a a a a a situation in 3d where we used separation of variables to actually um 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 determine you know um energy at the end right and the energy that we determined was a contribution from the you know the the x variable the y variable and you know the z variable right and also they can be different you know coordinate systems you know you can use you know um, 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 um cylindrical coordinates you can use you know spherical coordinates right it just depends on the system that you're actually dealing with you know like maybe you if you're dealing with you know with the rotations obviously um x y and z you know would not you know um suit that kind of a model quite well you know you might use other um you know coordinate systems you can use you know cylindrical coordinates or whatever you know it may be okay for 3d right this is more or less the same um notion the wave function equals to same notion no so it's n x pi x divided by a sine and y divided by y divided by b divided by sine and z by z divided by c you know okay so this is the wave function and also here x can be the length of the box you know so something more or less like this you know what I'm saying? When you speak, you know, of the, you know, the coordinate, you know, system and, and stuff. All right. So, why is in this? And then Z is here. Okay. All right. And lastly, um, the corresponding energy here um, was H squared divided by 8m into n x squared divided by a squared. I'm sure you guys are sending this, you know, wherever you are. Plus n z squared over c squared, you know. So as, as can be seen here, that e total can equal, we're actually able to, um, derive this using separation of variables ex you know plus ey plus ez and stuff like that you know what i'm saying so this actually was the work that we actually covered and did some derivations on it you know as far as a particle in a box was concerned so i trust you guys um you know understand you know the subject of a particle in a box quite better now you know what i'm saying if you have any questions concerning this just feel free to you know write in the comments below or you can email me if you want or you can call me whatever you want to do you know what i'm saying but i hope you guys appreciate you know um the particle in a box model and everything you know but above all stay cool and stay 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 awesome